Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Bitcoin smashed $69,000 today. Make some mother freaking noise for that. In today's show, I'll be sharing the latest technical analysis, as well as breaking news. Vladimir Putin says BRICS will adopt digital currencies for investments. Let's go. Also, Bitcoin whale accumulation mirrors 2020 trend, where the biddy rallied 550%, as well as MicroStrategy set for gains. Don't fear the premium. According to analysts, we'll also be discussing the the latest from Anthony Pompliano, revealing key catalysts for the next Bitcoin bull run, as well as Real Vision crypto analyst says one catalyst can trigger Bitcoin explosion above 500,000 per coin. We'll also be discussing the key reason for Bitcoin to hit $220,000 very soon, shared by Max Kaiser. That's right. He also recently tweeted, Bitcoin God candle on deck. Infinite demand meets extremely limited supply. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much motherfucking more in today's show, yo. But anyways, uh, let's get right into it. Now, uh, if you're new to the channel, very important to smash the likes, then go ahead and subscribe. This is the number one daily Bitcoin pot, hands down. And hit the bell icon, turn on all notifications, especially if you appreciate caffeinated JV. You feel me? But uh, anyways, uh, today is pot episode 1781. I'm your host, JV. It's October 18th, 2024. Happy TGIF. That's right, a little weekend pumpage. We just recaptured $69,000 after a hell of a long sideways trading action. So it is time. Let's kick it off with our market watch. You're looking at Coin360, the biddy, up 2.5% on the day, maintaining above 68.6. Again, we already captured uh, 69. Uh, we have ETH up 2%. All the major alts pumping in in the green. Something we love to see. And check it out, coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap sits at $2.35 trillion. Uh, Bitcoin, $1.355 trillion. We got roughly $78 billion worth of volume in the past 24 hours. And the current Bitcoin dominance sits at... 57.8% as the dominance continues to decline at 13.6%. How high would the Bitcoin dom likely climb? Let me know. And checking out Top 100 crypto gainers in the Top 100, we have Ando. It kind of rhymes with Hundo a little bit. Uh, anyways, it's up 13%. Worldcoin up 11% and Beam up 10%. Below that, we have the rest of these alts in the green. Let me know which alts, if any, you're bullish on for the bull. And checking out the crypto bubbles. Uh, crypto bubbles say 90 to 95% of the market in the green. Lovely sight. And checking out the monthly, very similar story, 90 to 95% of the market in the green and bumping. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one of our favorite metrics, uh, shows us a 73 in greed. Yesterday, 71, last week a 32, and last month a 45 in fear. And checking out the time chain calendar, we have 183,759 blocks yet to go into the next halving in 2028. I can't wait. We're currently on block 866,241, and you can currently exchange one US dollar of that tulip monopoly money for 1,452 Satoshis. So stack them stats accordingly. I meant just a few days ago, you could have got 1,800 stats per dollar. Today, you're down to 1,400. It's only going to continue to go down and down and down and down and down until one stat's a dollar. And by that time, Bitcoin will be 100 million per coin. So let that sink in. But yeah, let's get right into today's uh, technical analysis and pull up some of the live charts. Again, we already did the market watch in the introduction, uh, which you can catch on part one uh, after the stream here is over. If you want to go back and check that out, you should be able to read the headline right here, which says Bitcoin price set to break seven months slump as Bitcoin ETFs hit a whopping $65 billion record. That's right. Here you're looking at the one hour chart. Bitcoin faces a crunching weekly close as the bulls seek to break through a seven month downtrend. Trading view reveals Bitcoin price action attempting to crack resistance in place since the March all time high of 73.8. That's right. Bitcoin spent half a year consolidating since then. And despite several attempts to re-enter price discovery, Bitcoin remained range-bound ever since. Now traders hope the landscape is different. It is different. That's the good news. Analyzing the weekly chart, we have analyst Red Capital who showed repeated stabs at the channel's upper edge the latest coming week. Quoting them here, Bitcoin has experienced a rejection from the top of the downtrending channel in the red, just like in the past, which you can see here in the blue circles of the chart. It is essential Bitcoin weekly closes inside the red resistance to avoid a deeper rejection from here. 
Well, there you go. And a weekly close beyond the channel top is currently sitting at 68. We're currently at a roughly 69, so not too shabby. Already inside as buyers keep up the pressure and give the bears little room to maneuver. Generally, we need to observe this downtrending channel resistance for signs of weakening compared to the previous rejections, according to the analysts in the charts. And over on the lower time frames, there is more cause for optimism thanks to the daily closes already occurring outside the channel, as Dan Crypto Trades shares here. With a recent move, it has finally broken out of the channel it traded in for most of 2024. And uh, Bitcoin institutional demand eyes records. That's right. Recent days have continued the trend with upwards Bitcoin price action, spawning a chain reaction amongst investor capital inflows, quoting analysts here. Uh, Bitcoin investment vehicles globally have seen net yearly inflows of 360,000 BTC and are on track to surpass Grayscale led 2020 record of 373,000 BTC. Numbers don't lie. Total net flows of the US spot Bitcoin ETFs have topped a record $20 billion, while total assets reached a new all-time high of $65 billion. For context, it took gold ETFs roughly five years to reach that same number. Eric Balchunas, senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg, commented on the $20 billion tally. And in other breaking news, Vladimir Putin says BRICS will adopt digital currencies for investments. Another sign of the times. And we're going to be pulling up some of the live charts here. Live and in the flesh. This is brought to you via TradingView, via Coinbase, the largest exchange here in the States. You can see Bitcoin currently at 68.4. We did tap 69,000 uh, this morning. Here is the one hour chart. You can see we had two recently red candles on the hourly closes. Before that, we had one, two, three, four consecutive green candles. Very impressive as well. And zooming out from the one hour, let's check out the four hour. Four hour chart right here shows you we have that very bullish blue target set above 81.3. We do have a bear target as well, sitting at 48.7. And we do have a rising wedge formation breakout on the four hour. And checking out the one day chart, survey says massively bullish, rising wedge. I mean, look at that, looking sexy. One, two, three, four, five green candles. Uh, I mean, I should say four out of the last five trading days with an itty bitty red corrective just the other day. Overall, very bullish, and it is a rising wedge formation, clearly. Hopefully, we can continue this bullish momentum as we're poaching very close to price discovery. Checking out the one week chart, we still have that sexy cup and handle target sitting just at 124,000, which I believe is in play for Q4 this year. Let me know if you agree, disagree. And checking out the one month chart, we'll get a broader perspective here again via trade view via Coinbase. And as you can see, we're setting for a very nice bullish monthly close for October. We still have a couple of weeks yet to go. So there you go. Yo, let me know your thoughts where the price action will likely take us next. Let's continue with the headlines. Here you go. Let's discuss the latest with the Bitcoin whales. Bitcoin whale accumulation mirrors the 2020 trend where the biddy rallied 550%. Let's go. So with Bitcoin price making a run at the 70G level, which we're on the cusp of, whale wallets are accumulating the biddy at a speed which closely resembles Speedy Gonzalez. Andale, 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 Eva. July 2020 to January of 2021, when Bitcoin rallied by 550%. And according to Woman Kuyu, a verified author of CryptoQuant, this historical trend has the investors excited about the potential Bitcoin breakout, as illustrated right here in the chart on your screen. The Bitcoin whale ratio of the spot exchanges is currently similar to the ratio observed around July 2020 after the Novid-induced crash back in March. How many of you remember that? I remember Bitcoin crashing between three to four Gs. What an epic time to buy because one year later, we hit the 69,000 high from the previous cycle. That's a buying opportunity, family. The author indicated that the whales continue to accumulate the biddy despite the short-term price volatility as they're positioning themselves for the long-term price increase. Quitting them here. Whales are ready to welcome the FOMO by the dumb money. That's right. As reported, the whale wallets have accumulated one and a half million of the biddy over the past six months. And each of these wallets represented more than a thousand Bitcoin. An example, $68 million in current value. Meanwhile, a crypto quant CEO indicated that the new whale wallets with an average coin age of under 155 days have also reached a new high, a 1.97 million BTC. One key difference between those whale wallets and the ones on the spot exchanges is that there are non-minor wallets and potentially custodial. Speaking on the net return of these wallets, here's what he mentioned. Their Bitcoin balance surged 813% year to date 
taken up 9.3% of the total supply, valued at $132 billion today. And although the whale wallets represent a bullish outlook for the future, the long-term hodlers, where are you at? And the miners may continue to add a bit of the resistance to the Bitcoin price. IT tech and on-chain analyst of CryptoQuant shared his thoughts and indicated that the long-term hodlers are potentially stabilizing or taking the profits. Meanwhile, miners' profit sustainability has increased recently, which means they're integrating payment periods, which often correlates with a Bitcoin Bitcoin price peak, quitting the analysts here. Monitoring the short-term hodler, long-term hodler, and miners is crucial. Shifts here can impact the Bitcoin next move as the market watches for renewed accumulation of the profit taking. Anyone here taking profits? Where my hodl gang at? Anyways, let's continue with the headlines. We still got a lot to share with the fam. Uh, MicroStrategy. Here's the latest with Mikey Saylor's company. MicroStrategy set for gains. Don't fear the premium, says the analyst. MicroStrategy shares are set for further gains, even though the stock already trades at a 2.3x premium to the net asset value, which we call as the NAV, of the company's Biddy portfolio. According to the October 18th analyst report shared, the company's stock MSTR. How many of you are investors of MSTR? Let me know. Congratulations if you are. I know you have been outpacing every single company in the S&P 500, including Bitcoin itself, at least this year. Uh, could be worth $245 per share if MicroStrategy continue to leverage its balance sheet to buy more Bitcoin, which I'm pretty confident they're going to do, and start lending out the digital currency for the low-risk yield. According to benchmark fintech analyst Mark Palmer, shares of the MicroStrategy currently trade at around $206. Palmer raised his price target from STR from his previous estimate of 215 bones. And if you don't know, bones are dollars. That's my slang. How do you like it? As the premium to the NAV, to which the shares of the MSTR trade has expanded this year, the voices of those who argue that the stock should and be trading at such levels have grown louder. However, we believe those who argue that the MSTR valuation should be tethered to its NAV at a close one-to-one -one ratio are overlooking the impact of the unique engine for shareholder value. Creation of the company that has built in since launching its Bitcoin acquisition strategy back in August of 2020. And as of September, or September, MicroStrategy held more than 250,000 of the Bitcoin, worth approximately 17 billion as of today. Make some noise for that. Meanwhile, the total market cap of the MSCR share stand at approximately $42 billion, according to Yahoo Finance, as you can see right here. And during the August 1st earnings call, MSTR doubled down on buying the biddy by committing to a unique performance metric known as the Bitcoin yield. The Bitcoin yield measures the ratio of the Bitcoin holdings to the outstanding shares and effectively sets the Bitcoin per share at a lodestar for corporate performance. Uh, quoting Palmer here, the company disclosed that its Bitcoin yield was 17.8% year to date through September 19th, a level that exceeded the bitty yields of 1.8 and 7.3 it generated back in 2022 and 2023, respectively. And on September 24th, Palmer said, MicroStrategy could consider beginning to generate a yield by lending out a portion of his Bitcoin holdings, quoting him again, by continuing to arbitrage between the U.S. capital markets and Bitcoin and accreting Bitcoin per share during what we anticipate to be the bull market for the crypto, MSTR should be able to drive additional share price gains during the coming quarters. So there you go. Now, do you think? Let's continue with the headlines, eh? We discussed the latest MSTR gains. Let's discuss Anthony Pompliano. That's right. He was recently just interviewed on TV. Uh, he reveals his key catalyst for the next Bitcoin bull run. Shout out to the pump. A shift in the macroeconomic policies around the entire world, particularly the interest rate cuts and an increase in the global liquidity, is expected to drive the Bitcoin price higher in the coming months, according to the Bitcoin advocate Anthony Pump Liano, as I call him. Pump Liano believes that the U.S. Fed's reserve 50 basis point interest rate cut, which was achieved on September 8th, along with the rise in global liquidity, marks the beginning of the new trend that will benefit both cryptos and the stock market, quitting him here. They are going to bring the interest rates down over the next 12 to 18 months, and that's going to serve as a tailwind. Someone say tail? Nipponator, you got one of those tails. But anyways... For the investable assets, he argues that the combination of the lower rates and more liquidity will provide strong support for the Bitcoin growth. And in the Pompliano view, this upward trend is expected to continue regardless of the outcome of the upcoming presidential election in early November 5th. There where Trump and Harris are currently neck and neck in the polls. Well, not according to Polymarket, the betting line, because Trump's up over 20% or at least 20 points. Now, as Pompliano pointed out, the stock market has generally risen under every administration, except during George W. Bush's presidency, which was impacted by the 2008 global financial crisis. Quoting him again, 
every single president, both Republican and Democrat, has overseen and upmarketed in the stocks. Why is that? It's because we devalue the dollar. As money printer continue to go, brr. And uh, yeah, to watch uh, the Pompliano interview, uh, check the show notes below the video in the description. And let me know if you agree or disagree with uh, Mr. Anthony Pompliano. Uh, next headline, we're going to discuss the 500G target. Then we're going to discuss the Bitcoin God candle and the latest from the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. You ready? Check it. Real Vision Analyst says one catalyst could trigger the biddy explosion to a half a million per biddy. How would that change your life, fam? Let me know in the comments. I'll read those comments after I'm done reading the story here. Jamie Couts believes that one investment trend could be the catalyst that sends the biddy soaring to six figures. Couts says the increasingly Bitcoin adoption amongst the money managers could flag or cause Bitcoin to increase by more than 643% from its current value before 2030. Uh, quoting him here, every time a money manager chooses Bitcoin over sovereign debt, it reinforces the existing debasement trend. A slight shift towards Bitcoin could drive the price above 500,000 before the decade ends. I think that's a given. I mean, I'm optimistic that Bitcoin will most likely hit a million dollars in the year 2029. Why 2029? Next halving, 2028. Typically, it's the year after the halving. We hit the cycle peak. So if history is to continue to rhyme as it typically does, then uh, 1 million by 2029. And I'm calling it right now. So there's a little, in my opinion, an easy target. But nonetheless, it's still a hell of a target. Couts believes that Bitcoin's relative relatively strong performance, relatively strong, during the bear markets and historic value properties may result in more investment portfolios, adding the exposure to the biddy. Quitting them here. Key takeaways from a previous thread on the asset allocation from 18 months ago, number one, during the last bear market, Bitcoin outperformed the other asset classes, indicating the managers are not adequately compensated for holding the bonds, commodities, or even some equities. Number two, the shift away from the bonds is inevitable, despite government mandates for bond purchases or new banking regulations. And number three, techniques for adding Bitcoin to the portfolios for the massive sovereign remain viable, even amid the liquidity constraints. So he went on to share the Bitcoin could start attracting a percentage of the funds that traditionally are allocated to the government bonds as investors pursue better returns turns amid the fiat currency debasement. Common sense, right? Quoting them again. The basement is the real problem for the portfolio managers. In the relatively short period since 2018, Bitcoin and U.S. tech stocks have been the only asset serving as effective hedges against the massive increases in the monetary base. Traditional allocators will inevitably inevitably begin to weigh up the possibility that a non-sovereign bearer asset with no counterparty risk could be an alternative to bonds issued by the prolificate governments. And in April of 2023, he estimated that if only 1% of the global bond market value moved into the biddy, the network's market cap would rise north of $3 trillion, which would ultimately be 3x the current Bitcoin market cap, equating to a price of around $185,000 per coin. And checking out the tweet right here with Crypto Bro Fink, referring to Larry Fink, Mr. Lawrence Fink. Go home and get your shine box, brother. Bitcoin's portfolio enhancing qualities, a seismic shift in asset allocation preferences is under the way. BlackRock, a Latin platform utilized by the largest sovereigns and the money managers, provides the tools for the modeling and attribution while their ETF delivers a product wrapper. Every time a money manager chooses the biddy over the sovereign debt, it reinforces the existing debasement trend. A slight shift towards the biddy could drive the price above $500,000 per coin before the end of the decade. Key takeaways. Yeah, we already got into the takeaways. So there you go. Yo, now for our feature story of the day, fam. Key reason for Bitcoin to hit $220,000 very soon, according to the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. Yeah, that's right. Let's break it down, starting with a couple of his more recent tweets. He wrote here, the new all-time high gold price is predicting Bitcoin will trade over $220,000 per coin very soon. Now, uh, let me know if you agree with Max as Lawrence Leopard obviously agrees and shout out Max Geyser. He also recently tweeted, Bitcoin God candle on deck. Infinite demand meets extremely limited supply. And he makes a great point. Uh, the Bitcoin supply in the exchanges is at an all-time low for the past three, four years. And of course, demand is only increasing with the institutional adoption like we're witnessing uh, from BlackRock and the major asset managers around the world. So you already know. But let's dive deeper into this story and shout out to the high priest of Bitcoin, the one and only. Max Kaiser. That's right. Bitcoin maxing advisor to El Salvador's president, Bukele. Uh, shout out Bukele. I'm looking forward to actually visiting El Salvador in a couple of months. 
Uh, has published a tweet in which, revisiting his ultra-bullish prediction for the future price of the world's largest crypto, Kaiser tweeted that Bitcoin is likely to skyrocket to new all-time high, a 220000 due to one key reason. Another safe haven asset, gold, reached the new all-time high of 2700 per ounce for the first time in four years. And I think it's for the first time in history. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think gold has ever hit that high of a level. Uh, the previous all-time high was hit in 2020. Well, I guess according to the article, when the world faced the pandemic and investors began to enter the gold to hedge themselves against low interest rates and the massive amount of the quantitative easing as the money printer continued to go burr. It seems logical to think that once gold has soared to reach a new all-time high, Bitcoin is likely to do the same in the near future. Kaiser believes that Bitcoin will ultimately and quickly reach the 220 level that he has been predicting over the last few years, as he shared here on X, the new all-time high gold price is predicting Bitcoin will trade over 220000 soon. He also recently tweeted, for every dollar advance in gold, we'll see Bitcoin 20 exit with a $20 gain. So he believes Bitcoin will continue to outpace gold by a factor of 20x. Let me know if you agree with that. Now, this year in September, the Federal Reserve decided to switch its stance from a hawkish to a dovish one for the interest rate, which was slashed by half a percentage point. The Fed hinted that until the end of the 2024, a few more interest rate cuts are likely to take place, which is bullish for risk on assets like the biddy. It makes it more achievable for the average person to borrow money at a better rate to invest and stack the biddy. Common sense. Now, Kaiser bets on Bitcoin, not gold. Of course. Uh, Max said that he expects BRICS to announce the launch of a gold-backed U.S. dollar killer at their conference, which is taking place next week in Russia. And I shared with you breaking news earlier. Let me go right back to reiterate. Vladimir Putin says BRICS will adopt digital currencies for investments. What do you think the number one digital currency in the entire world is? You guessed it. The Biddy. So July, this organization consists of several countries announcing their intention to launch a payment system similar to SWIFT in order to weaken the domination of SWIFT and the U.S. dollar in the global markets. They intended to use blockchain for building and running that system in a stable coin backed by gold that would be based on it. Hence, the U.S. dollar would not be used on that platform. The BRICS movement is ultimately a movement of the de-dollarization collectively from countries around the world that are sick of the U.S. dollar. So as Max shares here, BRICS will announce a gold-backed USD killer at their conference. For every $1 gold moves, Bitcoin moves $20. So what sounds more attractive to you, fam, as an investor? Would you rather get, let's say, 1x gains or 2x or 20x? With the Bitcoin, obviously not financial advice. Anything you hear on this stream is for entertainment purposes only, but uh, you can just look at the history of the biddy. Now, many financial experts expect this expect the gold back crypto to launch this year or last year in August, but that did not happen. Amongst them was Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad author. However, Max added in his tweet, as I referenced, for every $1 gold moves, Bitcoin moves 20 bucks, thus making a bet on Bitcoin against gold. Now, I agree 100%. I mean... Bitcoin is digital gold. We live in a digital age. Bitcoin is the best, most appreciating asset in the world. Uh, Bitcoin has true scarcity. Gold has relative scarcity. They can always invest more into digging more from the earth and find more. Bitcoin, you can't create more. It's hard-coded. Thanks to Satoshi. There can only ever be 21 million. There's probably five, six million lost and gone forever, making it that much more scarce, right? So there's no comparison. Also, obviously, Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. Any other form of currency can be stolen from you from corrupt government. That's just the facts. Also, Bitcoin is immutable. No one's effing with it. Hence, it's uneff wittable. Let me know if you agree, disagree, and uh, what's your investment of choice? Let me know in them comments. There ain't no second best. Stack the ballots found in California storm drain. The mainstream media is actually reporting on it. Shocker. Smash the likes. Thank you, Judson. Shared on X. Thank you, Duckless. Much appreciated, brother. Let's go. Coinbase's Brian Armstrong is going down. Like FTX's Sam Bankman Freed is going to be sad when a dollar's worth a set. Yeah, by the time it's one dollar per Satoshi, we're talking a hundred million dollar Bitcoin price. Let, let that one sink in.